let's create a new project Windows Forms and let's just name this um, Tech Server and let's just add a um, a rich text box and just head over to properties and just make it read only and now we're at a button which will be btn listen for the name and that's all we need for now and rename the rich text box just to text box and now let's start coding using system.net using system.net.sockets and now um, click on btn listen and let's create a socket variable and a variable for the accepted socket so socket equals new socket address family dot entry network socket type dot stream and protocol type dot tcp socket dot bind new ip endpoint zero port eight socket dot listen zero and accept equals sock dot accept we're not worrying about multi-threading so much with this we'll only really be using multi-threading for the receiving in this tutorial and after we accept the socket let's just close our listener socket we don't need that anymore and let's create a new thread and add a while true loop Now this will be a tad different from before. Byte size buff equals new byte four. Int size equals oops. Except dot receive size buff to zero. Size buff dot length and zero. int size equals bit converter dot two int thirty two size buff zero while size greater than zero now this is different from before we're creating a new byte array with the length of four this will hold the length of the data that we're sending so when we code the client, we're going to send the size of our buffer first before we send the actual buffer so the client will know how much data it needs to actually receive for that one packet. And we're receiving the data right here, converting it back to an integer, and now let's code the rest. Byte buffer. If size less than except dot receive buffer size then buffer equals new byte size else buffer equals new byte except dot receive buffer size now that oops now what this is that what this is doing is this is doing a check to see if the size is less than the buffer size for example, if the buffer size is 20 and we send 30, since 30 is greater than 20, it would use the buffer size, which would be 20. So it will receive 20 bytes at that one time. And then when it receives again, the size will be 10. 
and that will be less than the buffer size. So then it will just receive the 10 bytes that are remaining. If you get what I mean, you'll see in a bit. Now that we have our buffer size set, let's receive it. Int rest equals um, except that receive buffer zero buffer dot length and zero. We don't necessarily need to use a rate at resize here since it's being a little more accurate, so we don't necessarily need that at the moment. Size less than equals rest. So this will subtract what it actually receives from the size itself. And oops, I've got memory stream. MS equals new memory stream. This will hold the data for the buffers that we receive. Now after we receive our buffer, then let's write it to the memory stream. Buffer zero buffer dot length. MS dot close. Byte data equals MS dot two array. MS dot dispose. And invoke. Method invoker. Delegate. Text box dot text equals encoding dot default dot get string data so this looks a little different from before but not by much so let's review what we're doing we're receiving the size first so we know exactly how much data we need to receive and then we're converting the bytes back to an integer we're creating a new memory stream to hold the data that we receive we're creating a buffer based on the size, so if the size is less than the buffer size, and you see that here, we're getting the amount of data that we're receiving and putting it in the variable, subtracting it from the actual size itself, and then writing our current buffer to the memory stream. So if the size is great, still greater than zero, it'll continue reading. Once this hits zero, then it'll continue on to here. And this looks pretty good. Now we now it's time to code the client. So let's create a new project. Let's just name this text client. And it'll be like before. Let's just add a rich text box. And just name it text box. This does not have to be read only. And let's add a button. Just name this connect. Or name it BTN connect. And for the text, you can just put connect. Add another button. This will be send text. You can name it BTN send text. Alright, now let's code our client. Using system.net, using system.net.sockets. Socket, socket, and connect. Socket equals new socket. Press family network. Socket type dot stream. Socket type dot TCP. Try catch sock.connect new IP endpoint IP address dot parse one two seven dot zero zero dot one just our loop back and port eight message box dot show unable to connect and now let's go to send text Byte data equals 
encoding.default.getbytes textbox.text Now socket.send bitconverter.getbytes data.length 0, 4, and 0 soc.send data so we're getting our text and converting it to a byte to, to a byte array and then we're using the bit converter to uh, convert the integer of the length to bytes and then we're sending it to our server the length of a byte array is I mean of an integer is 4 so we don't really need to make a variable for this since we know exactly what the length will be and then after we send the size we send the buffer so let's test this and let's see how it works. So it'll block until there's a connection. And the connection's made, so it unblocks. Now this should be more than the buffer size, so let's use this. You can get any text you want and send text and as you can see the data was sent and this is definitely more than our buffer size so as you can see it's sent and received perfectly and if we just use something else and that's how you receive more than the buffer size oops well, that was a screw up, but you guys get the idea now of how to receive more than the buffer size. I'll be creating one more tutorial after this, and then I have to begin training for the rest of the week. So after that week, then I'll be coming out with more tutorials.